Joe here just caught up with Jennifer Lawless down at American University about all things happening inside the Beltway. But we're going to take a little look a little bit west out to Minneapolis and the upcoming Super Bowl. I am happy to welcome in Lauren Windsor with Airbnb Watch. With some concerns about price gouging as fans are looking to go to the Super Bowl and bringing this to light. Lauren, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Well, appreciate Happy <laughs> appreciate having you in as Super Bowl fever certainly grips New England here and the rest of the country. And fans who might be looking to travel to the Super Bowl have some options, not a lot, as they fill up quickly for lodging opportunities. And Airbnb Watch specifically looked at a number of properties, as your report you just put out, about what the rates were the nights of the 4th and the 5th and then thereafter. They differed quite widely. Uh, yes, to say the least. Uh, the 10 properties that we looked at uh, varied uh, between 1,873% uh, up to 6,567% uh, from their normal rates. And so you put the report out and really kind of wanted to both warn consumers, but also people in power about what's going on here with this price gouging. So talk to us about Airbnb Watch and bringing these types of price gouging uh, examples to light. Well, so uh, the main focus of Airbnb Watch is, uh, you know, just for background, um, I'm the executive director of American Family Voices. Uh, we are a progressive nonprofit that focuses on uh, economic issues affecting working and middle class families. Uh, Airbnb Watch is a campaign. Uh, it's a coalition uh, of, it's, I should say, it's a campaign led by or, our organization, but it's a coalition of groups across the country that are fighting the negative impacts to communities from uh, short-term rental platforms like Airbnb. So with, with the price gouging, um, you know, these the primary problem with uh, the abuse of short-term rental platforms is that you have professional hosts that uh, abuse the platform to run illegal hotels. Uh, Airbnb claims that that is a small fraction of their revenue coming from multi-unit operators, uh, when in fact, you know, it's been estimated to be 40% uh, and more of their revenue. Um, they quite frequently will say that, uh, you know, hotels and other lodging businesses are price gouging and we're mom and pops, you should give us business. Um, but they skirt regulation and then engage in the same practices. So this report was really to uh, highlight their hypocrisy on that matter. And you had the event this morning at the National Press Club, again, bringing this to attention. Is there anything that regulators can do about this? Airbnb, as you've kind of mentioned, you know, talks about it being an open market and, and mom and pops. But as we see instances like this, I don't know if you'd go on Hotels.com, you probably couldn't find a hotel in Minneapolis and uh, for months, obviously, leading up to this. Is there anything regulators can do in this situation? I mean, I think that across the country, uh, you've seen various cities uh, enact regulations on Airbnb. If you're talking about with regards to uh, price gouging, I'm not clear that you can control supply and demand forces, but uh, there definitely should be regulations in place to uh, curb this commercial activity that's being undertaken by professionalized hosts on the Airbnb platform. And talk with us about this watch, as you said, this campaign to bring this to light. Uh, other instances that you've maybe looked at, again, will you continue to do this moving forward uh, to just shine the light on this issue? Yes, of course, it's a huge focus for us. Um, you know, there's still uh, ordinances uh, outstanding in uh, Los Angeles and DC that uh, we've been uh, working on uh, for the past couple of years and they just keep being delays. And the delays work in Airbnb's advantage. Um, you know, we would like to see regulations in place for, um, you know, limiting the number of days that hosts can list properties, um, you know, limiting the number of uh, properties that they can list. And we think that these are common sense regulations um, to prohibit commercial activity from taking place that really is disrupting communities and exacerbating the affordable housing crisis. You know, and it's, not just New York or San Francisco that there's an affordable housing crisis. It's also Los Angeles. It's also D.C. 
So it's it's especially relevant uh, in DC uh, as we you know had that press conference earlier today. But were you um, were you shocked by the numbers when you saw them? I, no, I'm actually not that shocked. Uh, just you know having dealt with uh, other reports where I, I, initially getting into uh, my own research on say the number of units that uh, a host uh, lists. You know, I, I had no idea initially doing the research myself that there were so many hosts that have more than 10 listings. Wow. And you see it, and you're like, oh, wow, okay, 10 listings, 15, 20, 30. And, you know. That's a business. Was, that's that's a business. <laughs> yeah, and I, I just don't understand how you can argue that it's not. <laughs> and, and that it's a small fraction of your business when anybody can go onto the platform uh, and, and look and see that that's just simply not the case. And we'll provide here uh, the chart that was provided by Airbnb Watch. I think folks will be very interested to know. Now, again, this was a snapshot in time when you had looked and seen what these listings were. But we're talking properties on an average night, $59, $69, as you showed in the category following, and thousands of dollars for the actual Super Bowl night. I mean, <laughs> it really just paints the picture of the situation of folks heading out there. I mean, between hotel rooms and between Airbnb, I don't get the impression that the Super Bowl is affordable to the average American family. <laughs> no, no, not at all. And in the most egregious example within the report, the one with the 6,500, 67% increase, you know, on February 6th, they're listing their rental for $75 the day after the Super Bowl. During the Super Bowl, from the 4th to the 5th, it's $5,000 a night. So uh, it, it's outrageous. So we'll share that with viewers here, but just wanted to, because again, you had this national press event this morning, what's the reaction you've been getting? You're the executive director of the larger organization, but I'm sure you've heard from folks today pertaining to this. What are you hearing from folks? Well, I hear from a lot of folks that are concerned about you know, the astronomical increase in uh, the cost of rent in DC and other cities uh, about families being pushed out because they can't afford to live uh, in their communities anymore. And uh, they feel as though uh, their city councils are paying more attention to uh, tourist dollars than to current tenants. So, um, you know, it's just, it's, it's really disheartening because I, I feel as though there's not as much, and, and they feel like they're not being heard um, you know, Airbnb has a lot of money and a, a lot of hosts that are incented to show up and, uh, you know, advocate on their behalf. And it's much harder to, uh, have people that don't have a financial stake, like a direct financial stake that aren't deriving revenue from these things to get them as motivated to show up in a, a grassroots movement sort of way. Um, so there's some difficulties with that. And, um, you know, beyond the affordable housing issue, uh, many people are concerned with living next door to a party house and uh, having the inconvenience of, you know, it, maybe it doesn't sound that inconvenient to a lot of people, but do you want to live next door to a party house? I mean, I know that I don't want to be kept up uh, at all hours with strangers traipsing into my neighborhood. Um, so it, it's a safety issue. It's an affordable housing issue. Um, and we really think that it needs to be addressed sooner rather than later. And, you know, you mentioned that party. There might be just a, a couple of parties going on around the Super Bowl. <laughs> uh, yeah, just a few. Just a few. So I what's, don't want to be drunk. <laughs> <laughs> so what's next on your plate? You brought this to national attention. Of course, here in New England, we're New England fans. I'm sure folks are heading out to the Super Bowl and looking for places to stay. But what now after the Super Bowl? What can we expect from Airbnb Watch uh, as well as other research moving forward. Well, you can continue to expect us to expose illegal hotel operators uh, in cities across the country. Uh, we are still pushing the DC City Council, the LA City Council, and uh, others across the country that have not enacted regulation. Um, so, you know, just expect more exposés. <laughs> And if you're a New England fan, I mean, again, if you're looking to go, I mean, you looked at just these numbers from Airbnb. Is there any place affordable to go? I, I guess if you want to stay like maybe 30 minutes outside of the city, I mean, you know, what is your convenience factor? So if you're really dead set on it, I'm sure that you can find something. 
Uh, indeed, indeed. Well, anything else you want to share with New England fans here or just folks who are curious about the Airbnb market and the findings that you've made in general? Well, uh, if, if folks are curious about the campaign, we encourage them to check out at airbnbwatch.com. Uh, if you're curious about our organization, uh, you go to AmericanFamilyVoices.org. Um, we do, uh, you know, post all of the news uh, analysis reports on uh, the website. You can also like us on Facebook for continuous updates. And, you know, we welcome tips. We would love to talk to you about your experience with Airbnb and, uh, you know, help you to amplify that uh, experience if you are uh, negatively impacted by uh, short-term rental platforms in your community. And it's not just Airbnb. So, you know, it's HomeAway, it's VRBO, um, Airbnb just happens to be the biggest and most well-known, so. Do you feel kind of a tall order as the watchdog for sort of this industry here, this sort of quasi almost unregulated industry? And I know you mentioned a bunch of partners working together on it. Does it all fall on your shoulders? But is this a heavy lift to be those ones, to be the, the ears and, and eyes for what's happening on the ground? It is a heavy lift. I mean, I think it's hard whenever you're fighting on behalf of, uh, on behalf of folks who really don't have uh, financial, the financial resources to fight back against a huge uh, corporation that really has unlimited dollars to spend on their advocacy. Um, you know, empowering citizens to fight back is always a, a tall order. But at the end of the day, we feel like residents have rights. And uh, we don't, uh, again, uh, I don't want to come off as being anti-tourism. We support tourism, for sure. We support home sharing when it's true home sharing. But we do not support uh, professionalized hosts using this platform to engage in commercial activity um, really at the cost of homeowners. So, you know, city councils have to balance those interests. And we feel like the... Uh, the way they've been acting has been in the benefit of this illegal activity for too long. Mm -hmm. Well, I appreciate yeah. your bringing this to our attention. Again, it was very interesting to see these numbers again. And as you mentioned, not against capitalism, not against tourism, but how this industry is run, regulated, and what better uh, platform to shine the light on it than what's happening with the Super Bowl coming up in February. So I appreciate it, Lauren Windsor, with Airbnb Watch, the campaign here again to shine the light on this issue. I appreciate your taking the time to Skype in today. Thanks so much. Okay, thanks, Lauren. Okay, Lauren Windsor with Airbnb Watch talking with us about price gouging, but the impact on the community with Airbnb when events like this happen. So I appreciate your taking the time to Skype in. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back with our next guest here in the Navigant Credit Union Broadcast Center.